So here we are on Monday once again, beautiful day, and it's going to be made even more beautiful by joining the beautiful Pat McGard. How are you, Pat? Ah, oh, Chambers, Jude, I must get a mirror. <laughs> How are you, Jude? I'm fine. I'm, I'm pretty damn warm, but I mean, I couldn't get enough of it. Oh, it's just, oh, Jude, it's, if, it's if the weather was like this all year, I would be yeah. the happiest man in the universe. Yeah, and Jude, the weather here this last week has been fantastic. You, who who needs Spain or southern Spain when you can have this? Honestly, like I've, I've, sp I've spent the last two or three days doing very little, just sitting outside, sitting in the sun. It's beautiful. So that's what it's made for. That's what it's made yeah. for. It's not made for working at all, at all, at all. Now, yeah. we have a few things to discuss here, so we better get cracking with them. Um, the one that uh, we want to start is one that's been in quite a few of the newspapers. And it is Doug Beatty and his presence at that, what he described as an unnotified demonstration, or yeah. another way of putting it was, would be an illegal gathering. Uh, yeah. uh, and it occurred and put it down, and he went down to it, and there are reports that there are men in balaclavas. Now, why do you think, Pat, why do you think that Doug Beatty would have gone down there when there were a bunch of um, guys in balaclavas marching around? You know, I, do, I suppose um, he's a unionist after all, and, and these well, were unionist people, uh -huh. uh, and so on. But Jude, you know, uh, can I come at, come at it in a different way, and I'll get back to your point. And yeah, I, I thought it was a sort of a beyond irony. These people are complaining about two tier policing. These are people who uh, took part in a what is it, an unnotified uh, parade. <laughs> they were wearing balaclavas. Yeah. There was no social distancing, as far as I could see. Uh, what you know, whatever else you want to say. And then they were complaining about Bobby Story's funeral. You know, but this is, I presume that's, that's yeah. presumes that the reference to uh, uh, two-tier policing. Oh, so right. the very the very thing they were complaining about is the very thing they'd done themselves. So uh, I think, you know, that sort of, uh, and anyway, uh, now getting back to Doug, I don't know what, Doug is, uh, and the initial reports I read, Jude, that he and, uh, I can't, was it Paula, somebody, I can't remember from the DUP, um, had addressed the meeting, apparently that did not happen. But he said he stood there and watched it that he's the local MLA and what uh, if you're in the town and so on and these people are there he said he stood well back he, he did not participate 60 meters so, 60 meters well fair enough you know I know uh, like the, the original reports were very different the original reports suggested that he had addressed the meeting and was a participant now Jude had he done that I would have been taking a very different attitude than the one I was sort of the, I only read this morning that he said most definitely he had not addressed the crowd and that he was not a participant and he stood with a clergyman well back. Now, having said that, you know, do you know what it gets everybody in the nationalist community? And let's let's get this is where we're, we're really coming from. If uh, Colum Eastwood, just uh, do, let's do that, and uh, had been seen walking or close by where a Republican, 500 Republicans wearing balaclavas and all the rest of it, it would be all over the news today. And if it, if it had been, say, say Connor Murphy or John O'Dowd and West Belfast where 500 men or, or whatever, men and women, I'm not quite sure, walked past, you would bet your life would have been top of the list uh, on the Nolan Show, talk back and all the rest. By the way, the ballot, uh, the, uh, the Porter Down meeting was not mentioned whatsoever. And I, I deliberately listened to it today, not even mentioned in talk back today. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe Nolan dealt with it earlier and he felt it. I, I think important. he did, I, but that's not the point. Yeah. You, you, the BBC have a definite ad, ad agenda. The, the, this thing's almost glossed over. Dude, by the way, the other thing as well, let's get back to this as well. This thing about the LCC, you, you know, the Loyalist uh, yeah. Communities Council. They represent the UDA and the UVF, and you know, like, can you imagine? Uh, you know, and they're given this respectability. Where is the party uh, if, uh, if anybody in the national side showed up representing the NLA and distant republics, of the Republicans? You no, know, would they get a meeting with British prime ministers? Would they? They, they would be, you know, and the, the hypocrisy and the double standards. You know, in regard to you know how these are treated in the media and by uh, the um, establishment, it's unbelievable. Maybe it's because somebody said, was it Tony Blair said to the SDLP uh, at some point that the trouble with you is that you don't have guns, and that's yeah. why you're not getting sort of headline treatment. Uh, is it not maybe the case here that uh, this is getting lots of attention, uh, whereas Republican stuff, um, 
would well, it's getting attention, but it's not getting unfavorable attention. I'm right, Joe, Joe, the spokesperson for the Loyalist Command, uh, David Campbell, said, uh, uh, "If we have to fight physically, then so be it." Joel, uh, Joel, um, Joel Keyes uh, told the Northern Ireland Select Committee that he couldn't take the violence off the table. Mm. Jim, can you imagine the absolute outcry had there been anyone uh, with even a hunt of green saying that? Okay, well, let, let, let's just stick to this, this particular thing. I'm intrigued as to why Doug was there. He says he was there because, well, he's the MLA and therefore yeah, and he and essentially whole, uh, yeah. should know what's going on. But, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be there. The fact that he's MLA, it doesn't have to be anywhere near. The, you, you might argue that the PSNI should have been there rather than Doug Beatty should have been there. Yeah. He said he was there to help to ensure uh, that the area was peaceful and again, you know, or remain calm. Again, that's the yeah. job of the PSNI, not the job of the MLA. He mm. says he didn't see anybody in the balaclava. Now, I no. understand there's no doubt at all that there were men wearing balaclavas. And no, no, there's there's saying, photographs of them in the media. To, yeah, to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And he was sick. He says he was within 60 feet, uh, 60 meters of them. He was yeah. near enough to hear the speeches. And yet he wasn't yeah. near enough to see whether or not people were wearing balaclavas. Uh, that's yeah. The fact of the matter is, I think this is an example of somebody who's out, well, he's a new leader for starts, who's going to, go, want to make initiatives that others haven't. Yeah. He wants to get himself uh, close to the loyalist community, which yeah. quite rightly, uh, quite, you know, he's right and that, his reasoning is correct. The loyalist community have been neglected by the DUP over the years to a point yep. where they're absolutely brassed off. And I don't blame them for it. Uh, so he wants to plug into that. I think you'll see uh, as the months roll by that uh, political unionism will come closer and closer to loyalist communities and slash loyalist paramilitaries. I yep. think you'll see a unifying uh, of um, unionism generally because it's at present it's on the slide there's fewer and fewer people voting unionists. It's splintered those who do vote their whole range of parties now. And at the back of it all is this old threat that's always there when things are going badly. There's a threat of violence. And I'll tell you something, it'll work. It will work. Yeah. And I think nobody think so. knows that and that's part of the reason he was there. Mm. Do you think? Uh, well, uh, that's a very interesting analysis. It has worked in the past, there's no doubt about it. But I, I think, you know, just because it worked in the past doesn't mean it's going to work in the future. I do hold this view that, that the tide has turned or is turning. Uh, um, look at the demographics. That, that's, uh, look at uh, Scotland is definitely well on the road to uh, leaving the Union. Uh, they've got a Prime Minister in uh, Westminster, Boris Johnson. He claims to be a Unionist, but so far uh, his words are not met by his actions. Uh, you know, and you sort of go, you know, the old, um, as I keep referring to them back in the day, you know, after when the setting up of the Northern State, there was all this sort of, um, because of the sacrifices of the people in the North during the, the First World War and the Somme and all this, there were mm. thousands of people, there was this sort of uh, blood kinship, if you know, yeah. for want of a better expression. Dude, that is well spent at the stage. Northern Ireland's a lot more trouble than it's worth. It's costing money. It's costing a lot of time. It's been, you know, uh, an inordinate amount of uh, difficulties uh, sending over troops, keeping. Uh, well, I mean, dude, you know as well. I'm only uh, yeah. bullshitting here in the sense. So I think that day, you know, the loyalists might overplay. They overplayed their hand big time in regard to Brexit and talk about karma. And I, I dude, I am not so sure it'll work this time. Well, I hope you're right. I really sincerely hope you're right. Uh, oh, I, I have a horrible feeling that it might work. Um, maybe only temporarily, but I do think it might work because the fact of the matter is, if there was a hint, if there was, say, a killing by yeah. loyalists, uh, paramilitaries, think of the reaction in the South. There would yeah. be immediately um, terrible concern and they would say, oh, this is awful. These people have been driven to this. And it, the, the rush of sympathy would go not to the nationalist or Republican community, it would go to the unionist community or the loyalist community. Um, yeah. So it might just delay the day if nothing else. Yeah. I, and yeah, when there, people are a, desperate, they will take turn to desperate means. And yeah. I just worry about yeah. that. Well, Judah, I met a good old Republican uh, several months ago. And you know, uh, by the way, I put 
pretty much the analysis that you just after putting. And I, and I, I was, his attitude was bad. If they want to start that, there are plenty of other people to here to meet it. And I think the day of that sort of bowing down to that sort of threat of loyalist violence, I'm not so sure. Like, I'm not saying this in any way that I'm in favour of it, far from it. The last thing anybody, I think, with a, with a sane mind wants to go, is to go back to the past. But basically, mm -hmm. he said it's a two-way street. Well, I, I was watching a guy last night on YouTube, um, and he's a prof from Yale. I think I mentioned him before, Ian Shapiro. And he yeah. was talking about South Africa, which is where he's from, and mm. the way that uh, Nelson Mandela was released and how they tried to set up the state uh, peacefully and so on. And he said that a characteristic of people who are in a really desperate situation is to sort of just dig in, even though they know that's not going to get them anywhere. Mm. They, the reason they dig in is they say, well, what else can we do? Yeah. Uh, so in a sense, they're forced into doing stuff, something that all the other alternatives to them seem worse. So they dig yeah. in deeper, even though they know ultimately that digging in is doomed. And I was yeah. he didn't mention, North, well, he actually mentioned Northern Ireland, but he didn't develop it at all. Uh, I was thinking there may, may be some truth in this um, for, for here. It does seem to be all, as you, you suggested, these are changed times. Unionism, yeah. it does seem to me, is hopelessly splintered. Their yeah. vote is falling anyway. So yeah. an awful lot will depend on what happens in the next election. And also yeah. a lot will depend on what happens this summer. I think there are people who are working to make sure that there's enough disturbance this summer that uh, people will, in the South particularly, will wring their hands and say, oh, we'll have to do something about this. We can't have yeah. this alienated community. Yeah, I accept all that, Jude, and I'm not sort of totally unconvinced of what you're saying, but the thing that I think is different this time, right, Jude, at one stage when you had uh, maybe 65, but um, 35 um, population split, it's near and near 50-50 at this stage. Th things have definitely changed. Like, in back, Jude, I'm going to say it one more, four out of the six counties now have nationalist majorities. You know, the, the, the unions aren't even in control of Belfast anymore. It's a very, very different scenario. And, the, uh, and Jude, the whole thing, you know, this whole thing about two, a border poll, uh, um, um, if you want to move on to, sir, Colin Eastwood has uh, come out, uh, he's an interview in the, 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 I think it's the Derry News today. That's right, yes. Where he says yes, that, he, that, he will, that he will see a United Ireland in his lifetime, that he's right. absolutely sure of that. Mm. Right, you know. Well, so he did say, say, he did say, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, Pat. No, yeah. no and, and I would, uh, he said, he, he, when he was asked, he said, oh, absolutely. So I presume, uh, what do you see in United Ireland, you reckon? Right, the SDLP, uh, Colin Eastwood is no uh, rabid um, Republican. He's a very middle of the road, moderate um, nationalist. And when he's coming out and saying that, and he's saying it openly, and, now, and uh, you have to remember too, that people like Veradkir and Coveney have also said in the past that they they think they will see a United Ireland in their lifetime. Now, let's be honest, hey, that, that, that's not, a, they are far from uh, Republicans. So there's a sort of an acceptance that things have changed and are changing. Well, I, I think the question is uh, how at what pace they'll change. Colum Eastwood, th Colum Eastwood is 38. Now, yeah. presuming that he lives a reasonably healthy life, I'm sure he's got at least another 40 years in him. Yeah. And not many of us would be content to say, ah, well, we might get a United Ireland sometimes in the next 40 years. Yeah. He said, oh, to, this is from that interview that Colum uh, Eastwood did. He said that uh, putting a date on it, because I hear, I, I would avoid putting a date on it because I hear all these chants for border polls and all that. I think it's the most stupid thing I've ever heard. Now, having said that, having said that putting a date on it would be a really the most stupid thing I'd ever heard, he himself then says, he expects a United Ireland, a border poll inside the next, this de the next coming decade. But they or it, maybe, or decade. maybe a little bit more, he says, giving himself a, giving himself yeah. a yeah. sort of a backdoor exit um so he's not saying really just in my lifetime he's actually saying in the next decade probably yeah that's quite yeah. a different thing quite a different uh, thing. Uh, well he's, he's saying you know what there'll be a border pool uh he's uh, betting there'll be a border pool before the end of this decade dude so uh, that's for, uh, that that's quite even significant it could occur already. but he makes a one very good point dude and he's he's saying if there's no point in going for a border poll now and lose it. Yep. He, and he said, and he, uh, he said, so let's have everything in place. And secondly, he said, 
we should plan with uh, don't expect the unions to participate but we should plan for for it because he says they'll leave it to, to on until it's too late well so, i totally know, agree with him totally agree yeah, with him totally yeah. agree with him um he himself i gather from this interview has set up a new ireland commission which he yeah. says is um a panel of experts um uh i'm not it, it didn't make clear what they actually are doing or what they're the STL, uh, I know one of the people has been appointed to it. Uh, it's a sort of an internal SDLP panel that to, to, uh, to sort of flesh out what the SDLP's position on it. Like Sinn Féin have got a sort of position on it. In fact, I was involved with a couple of other people a couple of years ago, uh, now at a very minor level in regard to what, what a 10 year plan for, you know, mm -hmm. would be. Right, the SDLP, uh, I think they're now sort of saying, right, this is a reality. So let's get people within our party, you no, know, um, no, intellectually working out how, what's what's needed, what our policy should be, you no, know, on all the big issues, you no, know, cross border health, education, transport, and all the rest of it, rather than just sort of having sort of that uh, sort of namby pamby uh, generalizations. Uh, okay, well, I, I, well, fair play to them if that's the case. That's terrific, um, because um, um, Michal Martin's uh, group down in Dublin doesn't seem to have very much life in it at all. Uh, no. I, I, maybe it's doing something wonderful. And uh, Colin, Colin Eastwood commends it because he says, oh, there's 500 million euros have been yeah. put into it. Yeah. But, you know, I, not, I don't know anybody that has particular faith in it. And I, I don't hear any uh, reports of progress. Um, no. I wonder, will Colin Eastwood, uh, be a very important thing, this, would Colin Eastwood have cost, well, well, their document, if they would produce a document from this, and I'd like to know that, when are they going to issue a report, or is this again an ongoing thing? I, I, as I said, I know one person, I don't want to name the person publicly, uh, but I do know one person who's been invited to join it. Uh, and uh, now, they joined? But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but when, but, now, Jude, I know nothing about the internal workings of, of yeah. that. Uh, it's, and and I, know, I do know that there's a, at least four or five people have been invited to join it. But Judith, as you said, um, has, has Michal Martin's uh, Shared Island Forum ever contacted you? Have you heard uh, anybody it has contacted? Well, put it like this, the reason I'm asking a sort of nearly rhetorical question, I've heard nothing. I've never met anybody who's had anything to do with it. And yeah, what, yeah. what were, is it a, a year down the line or is it two years down the line at this day? Uh, exactly. When you mentioned time, I think that uh, Michal's um, outfit and Colm Eastwood's outfit, they should have a timeline as to when they're going to report and they should make it clear what they're going to report on headings and they also should tell us in some way how they see what they are proposing costed that's the yeah. kind of detail i want that's the kind of specific stuff that i would really respond and applaud yeah. no matter where it came from and they're quite right uh, i think colin eastwood sort of hints at this that everybody you know can contribute you get a several bodies working at this and that's fine as long mm -hmm. as they're not at uh, um you know, opposite ends and uh, working against each other rather than pulling together. Yeah. But I, when they say a panel of experts, I get a wee bit uneasy because there's a tendency for uh, these groups to think that they are somehow representative of people. And very often they're not. And that's why I applaud citizens' assemblies. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where you actually have a cross-section of yeah. people in, in the population. Now that's brilliant. And have experts available that they can go to if there's something that comes up that they want sorted. Yeah. I, I think that's the kind of thing. I'd also, as I say, like to have a timeline on it so you know when this group's going to report, what they're going to be reporting on, and how much it's going to cost. I yeah. guess that those kind of hard um, brass yeah. tacks and details that you need to get down to. Otherwise, we'll be flopping around. Final point with regard to Colm Eastwood's thing. I think Colm is working under a problem here. And that problem is that the SDLP was never really a nationalist party. Yeah, there's an element. Well, John Hume is on the record as saying uh, the United Ireland was way down his list of priorities. That's right. It was formed, it was formed to um, give justice within the British system. And that, yeah. that was highly commendable. I mean, it was, it was largely yeah. successful as well. And it was a great thing to do. Uh, but he, he wasn't really interested in nationalism, as a lot of other people of his generation weren't or his class yeah. weren't. Uh, but what we're talking about here is being nationalist or being Republican um, yeah. or unionist as the case may be. So I, I take off my hat to maybe set up something. 
it's good that he's using experts, but he need to watch that there isn't a gulf between them and the ordinary people. And secondly, as you get much more, I think, I'd like to hear more about what they're actually discussing, how they're going to cost the, what they discuss, and when they're going to report. All yeah, thing oh yeah, by the, by the way, I uh, uh, can being kicked. I, I, I think the, one of the, the person I'm referring to is, uh, maybe I, I was a bit loose with my language, uh, they, re, they represent a certain community rather uh, than an expert. You know. Oh, well, uh, yeah, well, that's good. That's good. That's very good. That's exactly what yeah. I was talking about, that citizens' yeah. assembly, where you're representative of the common people rather yeah. than, uh, you know, a politician. Yeah. Um, so, well, well, it was a good headline. Uh, I'm not sure that's a headline they should have given that, you know, they said call me. What do you mean? Well, the, the headline of it was, as, as I remember, that um, Colm Eastwood uh, expects or is confident there will be a United Ireland within his lifetime. But surely, yeah. I mean, as I say, that's 40, 50 years. <laughs> yeah, well, as you say, Colm's 38. Uh, we'll uh, give him 50. No, he, 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 Excuse us, like, like, exactly yeah, expecting, not exactly next door, is it? Or next day, is it? <laughs> Except they're expecting Colm to go wild altogether and burn his mouth out by about 42. Um, yeah. uh, what they should have done was said, um, he says that within his lifetime, uh, and he's mentioning the next decade largely. Um, no, I, was at, I was at a meeting, uh, you know, it was a sort of private meeting uh, about two years ago, three years ago, where Colm was there, and he yeah. was, it was a very sort of informal meeting. And he said very openly, and he's repeated it since, there's no point in going for this unless every, all the ducks are on a row. And as you said, by the way, back to this, he says this sort of um, sort of spacious sort of, I know, uh, generalities, forget about that. He said, we need our, you know, everything, in, uh, everything in place, pl policies, plans, strategies, and and, all that. and he says, and he, by the way, he said, it's not kicking the can down the road. It's, he says, look what happened after Brexit. It shows how not to do something. He says, we should have this done properly. And I agree with that. Right. Absolutely. Totally, totally, totally. And we should be starting with the health system and mm. go on from there. Um, that, yeah, uh, I was going to go back to that guy that I was watching on, on, on YouTube. Shapiro. Uh, uh, and how he talked about the development of peace in South Africa. Yeah. And the person that he showed being interviewed several times was F.W. de Klerk. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, he showed de Klerk, uh, clips of de Klerk announcing this, uh, that he was mm. going to unban the ANC and the enormous effect it had. And they had de Klerk looking back on what he'd done. And my immediately thought when he was making comparisons with here, I was thinking, where is the de Klerk? Where is yeah. the de Klerk? Like, it's certainly not going to be in Paisley Jr. At one point, no. I thought it might be, but no chance, no chance. It's certainly yeah. not going to be Edward Putz. It's certainly not going to be Paul, whatever his head's yep. you know, given. Given. Um, and it's, it's not, not going, going to be, to be Jim, Wilson. Uh, Jim Allister. Uh, no. So I don't know where this person is, but yeah. there really, there's the same kind of need for him. There really yeah. is the same kind of need for him. I, I suppose... They might say, well, uh, at the time he unbanned the ANC, the ANC was still active. Uh, yeah. And we don't have to worry about the IRA, that they're not active mm. anymore. Maybe yeah. that's it. I don't know. But uh, uh. It's, in a way, it's to the... So, do, 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 and just to take you up on that point, you mean, uh, there was a very dis long discussion on talk back today about the, and, and, uh, two or three people. And uh, was it, where was it? It uh, doesn't matter. The DUP resigned uh, two councillors over the oh, weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it South Down? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, it was, South, that, it was South Down. Yeah, right. The, you know, and and there, there's and the Paula is it, uh, is it Paula Bradley, the death leader. Yeah, yeah. She she was on and you know uh, uh, with respect, she was sort of uh, you know remember Arsene Wenger and uh, um, and uh, Alex Ferguson when their team done something dirt, didn't see it. <laughs> well, Paula didn't see. Paula didn't know, seem to know anything about the infighting or anything else, you know. And and uh, and Ian Paisley came on. Apparently, uh, William Crawley. He was on last week, where he said there was no divisions within the DUP. Now, talk. That was like your man. Remember, Chemical Alley saying to the uh, CNN reporter, "No, no, the Americans aren't here." And just for that, American trucks went or tanks went past them. You know, in the Iraq War. Now that you know, you sort of go, "Come on," you know, oh. like. The, the, the DEP is split down. But uh, just the point I was making, Ian Paisley puts Sammy Wilson are now back in the driving seat on the DEP. Well, and that's the, re that's the reality. Well, as I say, that matches in with what that guy Shapiro's sort of general argument was, that people will dig in in the position they're in because they can't see a better one. 
even though they know in their hearts that digging in isn't going to get them anywhere. It's the yeah. least bad option, I suppose they see it. Yeah. Anyway, okay, let's move on to another little item which apparently is uh, annoying you. It doesn't really annoy me particularly. To be honest with you, it doesn't, uh, except that it keeps recurring. And that is these crowds that are gathering, especially in Dublin, whenever they yeah. eat up the lockdown, all right, and they're partying, and there's it's like St. Patrick's Day in Belfast with the students yeah. in the Holy Land. Um, so they're having a party. In a way, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my position on this one, Pat. I don't blame mm. them in a way. I think if I was a young guy and somebody says there's a, we're having a party, we're going to get together, have a few drinks, I'd be out there like a shot. Um, yeah. so the cops come along and the cops start giving them aggro. You know, there'd be a lot of those kids would say, oh, I never liked those bloody cops anyway, and lift yeah. somebody's throat at them. Um uh, when they look at the vaccines and how they're working, they would say, well, I wish half the population at least is it vaccinated. So, I mean, really, yeah. this problem's solved. It's pretty much solved, mm. for God's sake. What yeah. are you talking about? Look at the figures. The figures are dropping. Here, give me another pint. No? <laughs> Jesus, you're a real lip anarchist. I'm just saying I can see the yes. point of view. That's Fox. all. I'm yeah, not, no, I'm not they, saying to do oh, it. Right, okay, I'm saying I can right. say it right. You've had a fair go now. Let me get back in that <laughs> Right, there's about two or three hundred people, and apparently it was all organised on some sort of WhatsApp group and so on. Ah, they, come on, they, hey, come uh, on, come on, right, come on. Hold on, yes, that's yeah, conspiracy. Just, stuff. Hold on, no, 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 hold on, just hold on. Apparently they were creating quite a lot of trouble. There's a, a urific, urination and defecation and doorways. There's no toilets. A lot of parking oh, people on. in the area. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, I didn't drop, drop, drop you, Dr. Constant. I'm interrupting you. I mean, I'm interrupting you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, the cops are saying that there was a lot of people in the area not happy with what's going on. Richard, here's, here's the only thing. We have had one of the longest lockdowns in history. We're hmm. still considerably behind the North in regards to vaccination levels. We're, today, pubs and then, uh, are allowed to serve and hotels are allowed to serve outdoor meals in Ireland. Outdoor meals. I'd love to know what your steak and chip will be like if it's, if it's at least uh, if it's written. But anyway, uh, so on. And things are proven reasonable. And I think it says it the seventh of July. I think it's the seventh of July. If this, things keep improving, we're on a we're out of here type thing. Liberation Day. Mm. These guys get together. They uh, are causing apparently a lot, a lot of uh, up, uh, upset to people in the area. Yeah. They uh, they're. There, apparently, there was a number of fights within themselves, according to the cops. Now that is that, that it, it was getting very rowdy. They were standing out in the streets, sort of um, passers-by, having problems and so on. So when the cops came, they started throwing um, cans and whatever was at mm -hmm. uh, the Now, Jude, I understand totally. If I was eighteen or nineteen, and after fifteen months of a lockdown, I understand it. But having said that, Jude, other people have rights as well. You know, and you have a right. You have a right if you live in that area not to be intimidated, or somebody pissing in your doorway, or whatever, or somebody throwing a can at you, or uh, and Jude, the other thing, the big picture, like Jude, the last thing I want, and I'm deadly serious, as another lockdown. Oh no, no, I don't. I, I absolutely agree. I, 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 well, I, well, I sort of empathise with them. I'm not, I'm not saying mm -hmm. what they did is right. Incidentally, where it occurred, South William Street, that you yeah. should probably know. That's not a. That's not a. You know, it's not a domestic area. That's a no, area. no. So there no, wouldn't no. be people living there. So you'd ask the question: um, What were these people who were horrified doing there in the first place? Uh, mm. It's like you know, it's like what's that infamous place in Dublin where all these stag parties go to? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, God, uh, Temple called. Bar. Uh, Temple, Temple Bar. Bar. I mean, yeah. you, you don't go to Temple Bar if you're looking for a quiet cup of coffee. Uh, so the same <laughs> thing would apply to these guys. I think. Uh, mm. There's no point in complaining. It's not good. It's not good having people pissing no. and shitting on the, uh, you know, in the doorways of uh, shops yeah. or whatever. It's bad, yeah. in fact. But it's not a hanging offence. The the yeah. danger, as I say it, uh, as you put it, is would this lead to another lockdown, which would be yeah. appalling, and it might yeah. be very difficult to enforce. But it, yeah. my view is they should have enforced it from the very beginning. This notion of, of people rebelling at the beginning and not doing what they were asked. It's nonsense, you know. Yeah. They should have said this. Oh is no, nice the, the Irish people, Irish people have been very, very responsible. Oh yeah. Should, I, 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 I know. I've watched people here, and ninety-eight percent of the people here have been absolutely first class. No social distancing, mask, mask wearing, uh, hand sanitizing, mm -hmm. and all that. And, and I, I, I've even relatives coming here, and they would sit, you know, ten, nearly ten yards away from oh, me. Yeah, just yeah. So, yeah. 
but they're still at two percent, Pat, or even five yeah. percent. And uh, I, I, I hesitate to say who are spoiling it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> so cliche. Absolutely. But uh, yeah. at the same time, there is that danger. That that health danger is the one that would worry me. Uh, yeah. But the it's sort of understandable the larking around. One last point yeah. I'd make. It happened two nights in succession. Yeah. What the hell were the police doing that they didn't arrange things so it was impossible for it to happen in the same area yeah. the next yeah. night? Yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 that's so yeah, basic. And, 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 and then it, got, it sort of got out of control. Yeah. Had he sort of bring in the raids. So what, it, so it, it, what's the point? Oh, I really don't get it. There must be some very, dim, of course, I was going to say there must be some very dim people running the show in the Garda Shiohana. But then if I got through Harris is in charge of them, so I'm going to pass. <laughs> okay, not even going to comment there. Last item, last item, but not by no means the least item, and that is um, there's a, been a new what is what do they call them again? Envoy, is, uh, envoy, envoy, a new envoy, envoy. is going um, to America, and he's going to represent all of us, all of the people. Yeah. Uh, despite yeah. the fact that he was a member of the Unionist, the Ulster Unionist Party, ran for them, and that he was, I think, a vice president of the Northern Ireland Conservative Party, okay. but he's going to represent us all. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on him? What's his You're name? You're talking about Tra 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 Trevor Ringland. Trevor Ringland. Trevor Ringland. Yeah. Ringland. Uh, yeah. Former uh, player. Uh, yeah, and apparently by all a decent skin and all the rest. I, of it. Yeah, I met him. He's but a really I, nice guy. Really nice yeah, guy. And, and so that, that I'm not having a go with Trevor Ringland with her. But there's something very odd about the appointment, Judah. I really, I don't even understand. Like, wh who appointed him? Well, it's Branton Lewis. But apparently, there was no no nationalists consulted about this. No, uh, no uh, I can't remember. Michelle O'Neill said it uh, was actually sort of, um, but supercilious on the part of. Uh, and I think she said it was sort of what he did was sort of contemptible or words that effect. Oh, she was very he, strong against it. Yeah. yeah, that there was no consultation whatsoever. Oh. No. That, that, that this guy has been sent out to represent uh, all of us, and yet she says he is, uh, you know, uh, if he's representing all of us. I heard Claire um, Hanna on Talkback uh, being very circumspect in how you know, it's because she, she <laughs> rightly praised, she says he's a very decent fella, and she says, uh, one of, you know, he reaches out and he's, and she says he's loved his life uh, in a very good way. But she too said, like, I don't understand how he comes to, and uh, there's some semantics. Uh, he will be rep a, repre uh, a represent of the people, but not for the people. Uh, <laughs> just, just go and tell me what's the difference. I, I really genuinely don't know. Um, uh, uh, but there are other people, isn't there? Board Facha or uh, uh, Tourism Ireland. Uh, there are all these. Uh, there there all, isn't there the ADB or whatever the There's hell it's called? Northern Ireland Bureau. And West North. Uh, you know. So I don't. What is this to sell unionism to America? Exactly. You put your finger on it. Because I looked at what they said about Trevor England, what he was going to do, represent the North and yeah. form alliances for economic ventures and so on. And then I looked at the Northern Ireland Bureau and what it was supposed to be doing. And it was performing in links, connections, uh, establishing economic um, enterprises and so on, that yeah. would be uh, linked with here. So clearly what it is, is he has, a, as we both have said, and Claire Hanna said that Trevor England is a very nice guy. And he is. He is a very pleasant guy. He seems very moderate uh, and so on. And it's selling Northern Ireland via Trevor Ringland. So they'll yeah. see you can be a unionist, but you can be a nice guy. Yeah. I suppose that makes sense if you want to improve your image. But yeah. uh, as Claire Hanna said, well, anybody would say they did it without consulting anybody. Brandon Lewis yeah. said it was a good idea. And, and did it. The other thing I'd like to know is what um, salary is he getting? I'd like to know that. He, he, well, you he, might he say it's none of my business, but it's coming out of my pocket, so therefore it is my business. Uh, well, he, he said he. Well, uh, he said he, he envisaged is that it'll be forty six trips a year to yeah. America. Well, even but, that uh, itself uh, would cost a fortune. Uh, yeah, and, and he's as near Swizzer. So he's, uh, he's going to be to, playing uh, tourist class a little bit. Yeah, but as well, he, if he's got a practice. If he's going out for 10 days or a fortnight or whatever it is, four to six times a year, I presume he'll have to be suitably recompensed for 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 his yep. trouble. Yep. You yep. know, so, Jude, uh, yeah, right, let's get down to it. We're dancing, uh, well, I was dancing around at Greenwood. He, he is, he's there to sell, sell unionism. 
uh, you know, that, that unionism, you know, in ice cream. Unionism in America, you know, I remember reading years ago, Jude, uh, in one of the Dublin papers, and there was an American guy said, John Hume could get in the front door of the White House, but the unions had to go around the back. They were, no, they were acceptable. They were, they were, Paisley and people like that just didn't get the, uh, the, the, the carpet treatment, the red carpet treatment that mm -hmm. Hume got. Mm -hmm. And there were, the, and there was all this sort of Ulster says, you no, know, Trumbull wasn't very popular in America either. You know, yep. he, uh, in fact, certainly, you know, people like Sammy Wilson made seriously derogatory comments about people like Bill Clinton. They were never going to get in the front door. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd say Trevor Ringland, such a nice bloke, mm -hmm. honorable bloke, a man of integrity, you know, send him out. And, you know, Ulster unionism can be nice too. Yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, at the same time, I would uh, I'd, I'd share to some degree Michelle O'Neill's point that uh, a the people who they're going to she he is going to represent um, should have been told or at least asked about it the idea yeah. and uh, they should have been given some saying whether he went or not because yeah. um, you know it's it's going to cost money one way or another anyway it's clearly uh, you could you could argue it's a positive move by unionism coming yeah. to terms with the reality which is that Irish America is pretty cheesed off with a lot of what has happened in unionism yeah. over the last while. Yeah. Um, the fact that uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it links into Doug Beatty and the Ulster Unionists for all we know, yeah. because Doug Beatty is presenting himself as a nice guy too, despite yeah. his violent past. But then, you know, you can have, you can have a, we all can have a past, but still have a future. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. if we're not. Yeah, well, Doug was a captain in the British Army, wasn't he? In Iraq? Yeah, he was in he Afghanistan. And he did, he, Afghanistan he wrote, again. I was checking online, he wrote reports in 2011, 2012 for Channel, New, Channel 4 News. Yeah. So he was writing reports as sort of a diary of a soldier captain. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it was just talking about the uh, oh snipers and what we do and we go on and it's dangerous yeah. and we try to honor the dead. It sounded a bit like that Tim Collins guy. Remember him? Yeah, yeah. I remember you him. know, we're gonna fight, but we'll be really decent to the enemy after we've killed them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, um yeah, it, it could be that they're trying to link uh, uh Trevor England in some sense as being a sort of a, a non-party uh, Doug Beatty. Uh, where you yeah. know, we now she, see the decent face of unionism, and they're hoping to God that that'll put the boot right into. So, the so, uh, so the, the uh, so in other words, Jim, maybe maybe we are entering a new phase. So the battle of hearts and minds, and of course you see the other thing as well. Dr. Collins is Joe Biden. The uh, templates have sort of changed them, or tectonic plates, I should say, have changed again, because there's a very much like Biden does seriously regard himself as Irish. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're worrying that he's going to really yeah. carry that out when he said, BBC, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm <laughs> Irish. Yep, yeah. I'm Irish. That is worth. <laughs> he's walking down a corridor and be yeah. uh, BBC, Mister Biden. Any word for BBC? Yeah, I'm Irish. You, you, when you <laughs> no, think I said we don't talk to you. We're Irish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shouldn't be. Yeah. We shouldn't be. Shannon Freud uh, no. going mad here. Pat, go out uh, and sit in the sun for a while. Okay. Thank you, Jude. Good right. luck.